Kellen was on our podcast this weekend and was crediting you for the work with said. What has it been like for you to work with him over the last 15 months or so? 15. Uh, it, it's been great. You know, it, a lot of ups and downs. But the thing is the process. And uh, him getting mad at himself, me getting mad at him. But it, it's all about the process and, and him taking to it and, 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 and trying to grasp every little thing that I say to him and every little thing that coach say to him as well. You know, it's been a long process, but, you know, he's picking up on it and he's, he's, he, he's having an opportunity now and he's starting to show. Take me back to when you started practice before Australia. Where was he then? He was still growing, you know. He, although he was here half a year at that time, he still didn't know exactly how to play our way and even how to compete. And, and that's something that he's still learning right now, how to compete every possession. Uh, but him having a full uh, off season, you know, uh, he, he got the condition with the guys in, in the summertime. And, get to learn how we do things, uh, get to work out with Coach Bishop more and more. You know, all of that count and all of it helped uh, help say it to this moment. Do you think that the Australia trip was especially helpful to him? It was. It, it, it helped all of our guys, especially the new guys. Said as a guy, you know, we didn't know what we was going to get. Mm -hmm. And when he got into the game, it just showed, okay, so he can do the coverage call and do certain things. Um, you know, he played his butt off the few minutes that he played, and I'm, I'm just happy that he got that opportunity. Fast forward eight months, did you think he'd be banging with Hunter Dickinson in a conference game against Kansas? Honestly, I, I knew he was the the one guy on our team that can probably just bang with him. We didn't know how I didn't know how good of a job he would do, but I knew he can he can bang on him just to spare our other big some minutes. You know, unfortunate for us, we had some guys get hurt that opened the door for him to be in that position. And, you know, I'm I'm just happy that he stay committed to the work and not get down because he wasn't playing a lot earlier. And, you know, he stayed committed to wanting to work out every day. He always texts me, Coach, let's get a workout. And that's the thing you, you, you want to hear and see from the younger players in our our program is that they want to constantly work and, and get better. When JoJo went down, it was clear that he'd have to play more. What was he like in that moment? That moment. How did he? How did he take that? He was sad because of his brother going down. But you know, he had to jump out of it quick because I'm like, look, said, you know, we both. Nobody don't want this to happen. But now, our door is open for you to get some minutes. And whatever minute it is, if it's three minutes. Those three minutes got to be the best minutes that you have. If it's two minutes, whatever it is, you know, it has to be the best minutes that you can do. And credit Coach Sampson, you know, Coach Coach just wanted him to play hard. He didn't put any pressure on him or anything. He just told him, whatever you can give us, you give us. You know, um, and, you know, he's been, he's been good the three games that he's played. When did he start to kind of get it? Was there a turning point? It, it goes back to, to practice. You know, he's playing against the top team in the nation, and that's our red team. You know, that's a team just, that's really good. And you, you see glimpses of Sed, just like you see glimpses of Jacob, you know, our younger guys. You know, you, you see that stuff. you like, oh do this and do that, but you, you can't really 
I guess, measure it or put it into to space until he get into the game. You know, you can do all of that stuff in practice, but when you got live bullets, it's different. And, you know, we got to see it at the Oklahoma game, that he can hold his own. He did a good job at Oklahoma, and now he's going forward and, and playing. He played a career-high minutes against Kansas, one of the, best, the second best big man in the nation. I'm excited for him. Kelvin has said a couple times that he's a seventh semester guy. Do you think he's ahead of that schedule now? He's going to have to be. <laughs> you know, he, he, he's going to have to be ahead of that schedule because he was thrust in and in, in this, he, he was put in this situation. Kind of like Ramon Walker, uh, his freshman year. He was put in a situation where uh, he had to play. And now he's going to have to be ahead of that. And the thing what he got to remember, he got to build on all of this opportunities that he's getting right now and build on it from this point on until next year. And hey, who knows what can happen now that that six semester guy or whatever coach said, it can move up if you just keep building on, that, on the work. Kelly told us that Jamal has been pretty instrumental yeah. in getting him up to speed. What have you seen in that kind of relationship between the two? That, that man, Jamal, is, that, that's a special kid. You know, people talk about how good of a player he is, but his heart is bigger than than anything on the basketball court, all right? Um, you know, Jamal done a great job with him. You know, he every night after the uh, – and when we was in Oklahoma, he pulled, pulled, um, said to his room, or uh, vice versa. I don't know who room they went to, but it was somebody's room. I talked to Jamal that next morning, and he said, look, he, I, I, he got me. I went over with him, and then said, walked up to me. He said, look, I went over with, with uh, Jamal the night before. I said, cool. And he caught on to it, you know, and that's the, the thing that, that we, we appreciate about all of our guys in this program. You know, they, they look out for each other. Jamal's looking out for something. Give me one guy that's been very helpful to him on this team. Who? Single one out for me. Yeah. Obviously, j has been a plus. You know, but if you go back to last year's team, it was... Uh, uh, Reggie. Reggie was the guy that, that um, said looked up to, but this year J1 has taken to another level. And shoot, to be honest, with you, another one is Ryan Elvis. You know, his leadership goes beyond any minute that he plays. You know, uh, his temperament and everything is, is, is untouched because he know how to relate to all the guys and, and, and be their brother. What has Ryan done specifically in that relationship? Like, how is he helping a big guy? Just the way that he talked to him. You know, coach can really get on, on set. And, you know, the thing that Ryan do, he, he got a cool demeanor. And he's able to calm him down. And that's the thing that, that we all appreciate what Ryan And what's said next thing he needs to improve on? Well, his motor obviously is the thing that he has to improve on and, and staying, staying aggressive without fouling. You know, um, against a Hunter Dickinson, I think they're going to let you get away with a lot of banging. Uh, but you have to learn to, to, to stay, uh, play without fouling as much. How much fun have you had this year? And every year it seems like it, it, it gets fun. You know, but this team, you know, this is a special team, obviously. You know, we're, we're number one in the nation, but it's, it's because of the kids that we have. These guys, they really care about each other. And they care about this program, and that's, that's the, the most important thing, that they care for each other and care about the program.